Generation Z, I generation, Xennials, the net generation, or Generation N. If you have not yet heard of this group of students, one that goes by many different names in the scholarship of teaching and learning, you are not alone. Generation Z, or Gen Z, as we will refer to them in this paper, is the cohort of people born between 1995 and 2010. A generation that was born after the creation and popularization of computers and the internet. According to C. Miller and Grace, this generation makes up a third of the U.S. population as of 2020. They are the most racially diverse and technologically savvy generation to date, with a strong work ethic, resiliency, and a sense of responsibility. As educators, it is important for us to acknowledge that Gen Z, the students who are now enrolled in our undergraduate classes, have their own learning preferences and that previous techniques may not work for this generation. While critics might argue that it's not the job of university instructors to cater to the demand for more engaging instructional methods, but rather to help students grow out of it, we believe that embracing Gen Z learning preferences will not only create a more efficient learning environment, but also prepare students for an ever-evolving workforce. As Fiertog and Berger argue, quote, rather than dismissing the Gen Z's reluctance for the lecture as a means for education, it's worthwhile to consider what these multitasking, graphically-oriented students are requesting. They want to have a say in their education, contribute toward the discussion of how they will learn, participate in hands-on activities, and collaborate with their colleagues. Because many traditional teaching methodologies, such as lectures, are no longer adequate for Gen Z learners, innovative learning activities must be incorporated into courses. Students' learning time and attention are both limited, so instructors must focus on providing an engaging and goal-oriented approach. A focus on gamifying learning activities increases engagement, relevance, immersion, and assists with the transfer of learning to real-world situations. C. Miller and Grace posit that Gen Z students are often motivated by rewards such as an opportunity for advancement or earning credit, rather than a prize or tangible gift. Through their experience and access to video games, many Gen Z students are accustomed to instant feedback and the individualized nature of progressing through an experience with levels, lives, and unlocking new territory as a reward for their work. A study run by C. Miller and Grace revealed that 74% of Generation Z participants claim to find motivation through achievement, especially in terms of knowing they could gain credit towards the next milestone or an opportunity for advancement. Regardless of method, awarding credit for activities can both prepare those in Gen Z for advancement to the next level and motivate them to keep moving forward in their pursuits. Gamification, or the use of elements traditionally thought of as game-like or fun to promote learning and engagement, is one way of motivating Gen Z learners. By incorporating game-based mechanics, aesthetics, and game thinking, instructors can motivate their students to engage with material and solve problems. While some might see gamification as a dilution of real learning, gamified learning can, and often is, difficult helping learners to acquire skills, knowledge, and abilities in short, concentrated periods of time with high retention rates and effective recall. In this paper, we suggest four ways in which gamification can be incorporated into the undergraduate music theory curriculum as a way for instructors to align their teaching with how Gen Z students prefer to learn. One, online skill building resources. Two, puzzles. Three, game show activities and four online speed quizzes. One convenient way to integrate gamified learning is through online skill building resources. These activities are part of several music theory textbooks online resources, such as the inquisitives that accompany Musician's Guide to Theory and Analysis by Clendenning and Marvin, and Concise Introduction to Tonal Harmony by Burstein and Strauss. The online quizzes are of a moderate length, aligned with the presentation and pacing of textbook content, 
provide immediate feedback with textbook page numbers if questions are missed, and contain many different question types, such as matching, fill in the blank, multiple choice, and spell the chord. More importantly, for connecting to Gen Z, these skill builders allow students to reach levels, earn bonus points for having a correct answer streak, and raise the points earned or lost for each question based on their confidence level. These activities can be integrated into many learning management systems, which enables the instructor to seamlessly incorporate these activities into the course grades. Similar to this, Music Theory Skill Builder, or MTSB, can be used as an online resource for improving and mastering fundamentals, such as reading notation, rhythms, scales, and intervals. MTSB provides hundreds of exercises with different question models for students to complete, instant feedback, a built-in gradebook for instructor monitoring, and the ability to adjust or assign certain modules to coordinate with in-class learning. When we use this tool, students are able to complete modules as many times as they would like to practice the material and improve their grades. Next, we'll see a quick demonstration of an inquisitive activity. Instructors are able to modify points and questions required for each chapter activity. When students begin answering questions, you'll notice here a wide variety of question types. Students can increase the points awarded or lost based on their understanding of each concept and confidence level. Now, when students get on an answer streak where they have several answers correct in a row, they'll be awarded bonus points, which help them level up faster. Here's the bonus points. And once they reach a level, they can't go back below that level. So they've already secured that high of a grade. They can decrease the points wagered if they're not sure of an answer. And then if they answer incorrectly, this link on the website will take them straight to the book and they can find the answer on that page. Puzzles are another way that students can get some hands-on practice in understanding abstract concepts, especially form. When utilizing puzzle activities in the classroom, we first introduce the concept through a partially flipped model approach. The students read about the concept from their textbook, watch a 10 minute lecture video that covers the most important concepts, and take a low stakes online reading check. Following this outside of class time introduction, we jump directly into the hands-on puzzle activities in the classroom. The activity that follows is a normative sonata form puzzle. For this type of activity, we provided students with puzzle pieces, each with a component part of sonata form written on it. For example, exposition, first tonal area, transition. The note cards utilized are of different colors for different levels of analysis. One color for the large overall structure, one color for the smaller components of each group, one color for the normal major key centers, and one color for the minor key centers. Students worked in groups to put together the puzzles to create a diagram to demonstrate an understanding of sonata form. These puzzles show that students understand what concepts make up a form and what smaller units comprise larger forms. In the video demonstration, you will see that the students discuss the concepts with each other and thus are able to clarify any questions they have following the outside of class introduction to the concept. By having students work in groups, they are able to get feedback from their colleagues, and this alleviates their fear of asking clarifying questions in front of the entire class. First thing we have is a pizza. Yeah. So now we have to go back here too. 
I think we should also start by putting it in the major section of the yeah. uh, yeah. exposition. Yeah. Uh, so that's, yeah. that's first, then development. Yeah. Development in the center. Yep. Yeah. Yes. And then all the time, you should go out, you should go to the beginning. First thing first. Second. Right. Yes, well, yeah. you need to have the, the transition then. Oh, yeah. And I think there's also the one with pause before the, sure. the immediate yeah. surgery occurs at the same time. It, it's right before the second pain you're getting. And then... Development, right? Or is there another transition? I think the development is going to go from Right. So that is what you can have. Yes. Three transitions. But yeah, all the ones. This one. Yeah. But I think you should take the minor one as well. Oh yeah, I forgot. Yep. 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 And then five will go under the second theme. Oh, closing theme. That's just gonna go over here. Or. Yeah, this will go under the recap. Actually, so that goes there. Where's the, oh, the, the yeah. major one? Uh, oh, right there. Then this goes to five, right? Yeah, five. Yeah, and this second figure. Yep. Does this three go? Yeah, that will be, that'll be like the, the minor one. Yeah, but, oh, for minor. So you yeah. have five these. Okay. And then this and is, this, be this is for the re-transition. Yep. Yeah, the five of the tonic. Oh, yeah. And, um, this looks about right. Yeah. Yeah. Should we put the this these parts above so it's more? Yeah, it's since it's like a higher like ribbon. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. In addition to sonata form, we have used puzzle activities for students to practice with a variety of music theory topics. One of these categories includes chords and Roman numerals. For chords. Students work in groups to spell varieties of triad and seventh chord qualities using pitches written on note cards. Following this puzzle activity, our students then go to writing these chords on whiteboards. For Roman numeral puzzle practice, students are supplied with note cards that have a variety of chords written, such as major two, minor two, and diminished two. Students are then asked to work together to create the pattern for the Roman numeral qualities for major and minor keys. We have also used puzzles for small scale forms, including sentences and periods. We provide students with a note card with a fragment of a small form written on it. For example, basic idea, antecedent, continuation. These puzzles enable students to not only understand what components make up a form as a whole, such as a continuation belonging in a sentence, but not in a period, but also what smaller units make up larger ones. A basic idea and its repetition make up a presentation, for example. Similar to our sonata form activity, we have used these puzzles for students to approach other large scale forms, including binary, ternary, multi-level phrase models, and large forms such as sonata, rondo, concerto, and sonata rondo. Additionally, instructors can gamify activities in the classroom to provide a refreshed perspective on traditional content. Some tried and true methods include using game show models such as Family Feud or Jeopardy for content review days. Early in each unit, we have science fair days. These days occur during the first class meeting after new content is introduced. Students are assigned as a small group a topic they will talk about to the class and they must create an experiment, in this case a musical example, to demonstrate the concept. This type of review helps students synthesize what they learn in a reading or lecture video, and the group setting allows students to get more clarification by asking questions of their group members and having to put into action what they have learned. The science fair works best by placing time parameters on both the preparation time and demonstration of the concept. For a form and analysis activity, we built a new take on escape rooms with vocal forms. Students worked in groups to identify the form of 15 vocal songs, such as these displayed on the screen. The scores to these 15 songs were printed 
numbered, and displayed in the front of the room on tables. Each group was able to retrieve one song score at a time, and they could complete them in any order. After looking at the pieces, students buzzed in using sounds on their phones, and then they described the form that they assigned to the piece and the reasoning in support of the form to the instructor before moving on to the next piece. The gamified goal was to finish before time expired and beat the other groups. Following this activity, we discussed with the students what elements and characteristics aided them in identifying the form before moving on to a deeper analysis of songs. A similar activity can be completed with the gamified concept of score speed dating. For this game, students worked in groups to examine scores and identify interesting features in a given amount of time. After the time expired, students com commented on something interesting or notable they found in each score, such as a second, uh, the type of second inversion chord used, phrase structure, form, chromaticism, rhythm, and even 20th century techniques. The malleable nature of this activity allows it to be used in different units and enables the instructor to direct the student's attention to identify topics that are relevant to particular learning objectives. We have also had success bringing Kahoot into theory courses for the review of concepts. Kahoot is an online program that is free for educators and enables the creation of game-based learning quizzes in a short amount of time. This program allows the incorporation of images into the quiz, so you can easily ask questions about notated music, such as chords, rhythms, or excerpts. Students are able to take part in the quiz by using their smartphones, tablets, or computers, an attractive feature for Gen Z students who incorporate technology into all aspects of their lives. Many of our students were exposed to Kahoot during their high school education and enjoy continued use of this software. The software awards points based on the speed of correct answers, encouraging fluency with the topics at hand, as well as extra points for answering multiple questions in a row correctly. After the quiz, Kahoot will display the highest scoring participant, which enables an instructor to easily award extra credit for excellent performances. To take this activity a step further, we have students or groups of students write the questions on the topics being reviewed. As an added bonus, Kahoot provides the instructor with immediate feedback from the class to know which aspects of a given topic are readily understood and which areas need further clarification. Additionally, instructors can access the game data later on to, under, uh, to know how each student answered particular questions, which questions were the most difficult, and a calculated average for each student in order to identify those who are struggling most. We have had success bringing this gamification strategy into many different theory classes, from first semester fundamentals through upper level post-tonal analysis courses. In the following demonstration video, you'll see a Kahoot played by my second semester theory class. All of our learning is currently remote, so this particular game was played over Zoom with the instructor, me, sharing my screen with the questions and students answering on their phones remotely. For context, this game was played during our Friday tutorial, following a Monday and Wednesday lecture on modulation. The previous week, we discussed tonicization, so this Kahoot was meant to review and consolidate information on those two topics. I created the Kahoot beforehand, following the points for review and test yourself sections at the end of the modulation and tonicization chapters in the Burstein Strauss textbook. Personally, I like to play Kahoot at the beginning of our Friday tutorial to refresh what was covered in that week's lectures and to provide me and the students with insight on what material is already understood and what needs to be covered more thoroughly during our tutorial. As you'll see, different styles of questions can be asked, including true and false and multiple choice, and images can be displayed to ask specific questions about an excerpt. For questions that are easily understood by all or most of the students, we move quickly on to the next question. If a question is missed by many students, we'll take a short amount of time to go over the correct answer and the strategy for arriving at that answer before moving on. After seeing a few questions and the general gameplay, we'll then jump ahead to the end of the quiz to see how the game wraps up with the podium. True or false, you can tonicize any chord in a key. Ooh, yeah, this one is false. Remember, you can't tonicize a diminished chord. So we can never tonicize a seven diminished, and in minor, we can't tonicize two either, because that's also diminished. All right. 
Oh yeah, Hubert taking the lead here. Got a good solid start. That's good. All right. In G major, what are the notes in a five seven of two chord? G major, five seven of two. Nice, E, G sharp, B, B. So remember our two chord is A, C, E, G, but we need five, seven of two. So what is five of A? It's E, G sharp, B, B. Nice. Ooh, Tanika taking the lead. All right. What accidentals is or are missing from the following chord? This is a hard one. For E major, we need seven diminished seven of six. Ooh, ran out of time on that one. Yeah, we need B sharp. Remember we're in E major, we were in E major, we we're tonicizing six, which is C sharp. And we need to raise B so that it's B sharp to be the leading tone. Weird, but that's what we need. All right, nice. Nobody got any points on that one. Sad. That was my great job. Let's see how we finished up here in third place. Anna, nicely done. Second place, Tanuka. And our winner of tonicization and modulation. Nice. As Generation Z is growing older and entering college and the workforce, the use of gamification is becoming more widespread as a way of motivating this cohort in improving their learning. Recent research on gamification, as outlined by CAP, shows that not only are instructional games effective for a variety of learners, but they also promote various levels of thinking, from recalling basic terms to more higher order thinking. They can be scaffolded to increase difficulty throughout the semester, and various alternations can be made to engage and appropriately challenge all students, from those who are struggling with the content to those who are excelling. The activities we presented throughout this paper allow instructors to gamify various aspects of their courses, from homework and out-of-class learning to engaging in-class activities. While some of these gamified options, such as the online skill builders, allow students to work through content at their own pace. Others, such as the escape room and puzzles, allow students to collaboratively work together with their peers. The added dimension of competition, either with oneself by increasing the confidence levels on inquisitives or with other classmates on Kahoot, increases student motivation to build fluency and accuracy with the concepts at hand. By gamifying music theory, we are giving our students the opportunity to learn in ways that are most effective for them through hands-on, engaging, self-paced, collaborative, and competitive activities. By gamifying our own curricula, we have noticed increased levels of engagement, relevance, immersion, retention, and transfer of learning to real-world situations. Online skill building resources, puzzles, game show activities, and online speed quizzes are just four sample ways that instructors can incorporate this strategy into their music theory curriculum to foster engagement, motivation, and accelerate learning for this new generation of college students.